Good morning, hipsters. Uh, welcome to our first grade video today. This is Ms. Lawak, and as you can see, I have a very special guest with me today. So here at KIPP, we love reading every single day, and this year in first grade, we really worked on writing our own stories. And as we know, every single book that we read has an author who wrote it. And today, we're going to talk with Diane Zoller, whose job is a children's book author. So that means for her job every day, she writes books. So this is Diane Zoller, and a bunch of you wrote in um, some questions to ask her. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. All right, um, so we're gonna start with just like some basic questions about being an author, and then we're gonna dive into like some more complicated questions that I thought were very thoughtful. Um, okay. Kiari wants to know, what made you want to become an author? That's a good question, Kiari. Um, I wanted to become an author because when I was about your age, I loved to read. I started reading in about first grade and I went to the library all the time and I just loved books. So I thought at some point, and I'm not sure when, maybe I could write one. And later on, I decided I would really try to do it and I did and it got published and there you go. So it's because I love books that I wanted to write books. Awesome. And sort of following up on that, Trinesia asked, um, did you read millions of books before you wanted to become an author? Well, Trinesia, yeah, probably. Maybe not millions, but like dozens or hundreds. I also read the same books over and over again a lot of times, which my parents thought was really weird. But <laughs> it's because I love them so much. So yeah, the more books that you read, the easier it is for you actually to be able to do your own writing. So I, I highly recommend reading lots and lots of books. Um, and I sort of wanted to insert my own question here because um, we're sort of talking about you reading books as a child, but then we know that you went to college and it kept, we talk about going to college and growing our brains. We can go to college all the time. So I, wanna, um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, what college did you go to? I went to Cornell University in New York State. Yeah, so that's just at Kip. All of our um, classrooms are named after a college, so mine is Cornell. So I oh, yay, thought, Cornell! I thought they would like that little shout out. <laughs> what it, my question is, what did you learn at Cornell that helped you become an author? Oh well, a lot of stuff. I didn't take any classes really on how to be an author, but I took classes in English literature, which means reading a lot of books. And I took classes in history, which I loved, and I put a lot of history in my books. So those things helped me too, to also become a writer. And plus, you know, in almost any class you take, you do a lot of writing, uh, you know, you write papers and things like that. And so just about everything that I did in college helped me be a writer. That's so cool. So the kids watching you right now are going to college in the year 2031. Um, so <laughs> we've got some um, future Cornellians who- That's great. Uh, for that. Yeah. Um, okay. Back to the Kipsters questions. Uh, Kalia wants to know, how long does it take to write a book? Oh, another good question, Kalia. Um, it really depends. It, if I'm doing just writing books full time, which I don't always do, it will probably take me about eight months to a year to write it from start to finish. Um, if I'm doing other work at the same time, maybe two years. So, cause I just do it when I have time to do it. But there's a lot that goes into it besides just writing. You don't just write one draft of it. You have to keep revising it and reworking it and trying to make it better. So it could take a long time, but anywhere from like, I don't know, eight months to a couple of years is, is standard. Wow. So that sounds like- It sounds like a long time. Yeah. It sounds like it takes a lot of patience, but- one thing we always say in my classroom is that when you're writing, you're never really done because you can always yes. make it better. Yes, at some point you just have to decide when you're, when you're being an author that you're just gonna, you have to say that you're done because you have to send it off to your editor. But you always get a chance to redo it a little bit or change a little bit of this or that if you want to. So no, writing is never all the way done. You're always trying to make it even better. Awesome. Um, Kiari and Jerome both asked, how many books have you written? Wow. Okay. I have written, let's see, four fairy tale retellings based on different fairy tales, but they're like longer stories. And then um, two other fantasy books, one called The Marvelwood Magicians, which is about a circus family who has magical powers. And the other one called Baker's Magic, about a girl who can bake feelings into the, the uh, pastries that she makes. 
So whoever eats the pastries, they feel the same thing that she's feeling. So like if she's mad when she bakes cookies, the people who eat the cookies feel mad. So six all together and I have new ones coming out. Very cool. We'll have to get those in our library. That's cool. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Um, now we have a, a couple kids, both Mackenzie and Kenton want to know, how do you come up with your stories? Mackenzie specifically asks, how do you get your inspiration? From anything, really. Sometimes it's from things that I see on, I don't know, television or things that I read about that I think are interesting and I want to go farther into that. Um, one idea that I that I got for, for the Baker's Magic was from reading about uh, these, or and seeing also these giant fields of tulips that were just like huge swaths of red and yellow. And they were so beautiful, I wanted to put them in a book. And that was sort of the very first idea for Baker's Magic. So places that I travel and things that I see even just around the house, conversations I have, almost anything can sort of start the inspiration for a story. A lot of writers that I know, they carry around notebooks and they jot stuff down all the time because they're always seeing things that make them think of stories. That's very cool. Um, and then McKenna wants to know, how do you create your characters specifically? That's a really good question. And that's always changing too, just like my writing is always changing and I'm always adding to it. With characters, um, I try to start with an idea more about what the character is gonna do than who the character is. A lot of writers do it the other way around. They start with who the character is and move on from there. And I'm trying to work a little bit more in that way. But as, as the story goes on, as I keep writing, the character becomes fuller and fuller and more developed because he or she is doing different things, making different decisions, and I get to know them a little better. It's actually like getting to know a person, or getting to know a friend. You get to know your characters. Awesome. And then one last question about characters. Mm -hmm. Kaden asks, do you always develop characters based off of yourself or people you know? Not always, but almost all of my characters have at least a little bit of somebody I know in them. Like, you know, a, a phrase that somebody says a lot or just a way that they move or, you know, so, some physical thing that they do. So I like to put little bits and pieces of people in my characters. Sometimes it's just their name. Like, for instance, we have a, yeah, there's a Prince Tycho in one of my books. And uh, my son is named Tycho, or that's his middle name anyway. So just little bits and pieces like that. But it can be fun to make your characters a little bit out of people you know. You don't want to make anybody upset, though. So we have to be careful about doing that. <laughs> um, and then the very last question is coming from me again. If you, um, if you could give one piece of advice to yourself as a first grader, what would it be? To myself as a first grader, let me think. Well, because I think I was thinking about being a writer when I was a first grader, I would say keep on working toward that goal. If you have something in mind that you really want to do and you keep on working hard at it, it's really possible that you can do it. Because, I mean, I did it and I never really, you know, imagined that I could and here I am. So just keep on working at it. And also keep on reading books all the time. Can't hurt no matter what. I love that so much. Um, so all of the Kipsters who are watching this, um, I hope that you guys give a big thank you to Miss Diane Zoller for coming out. And I hope you guys take some inspiration from this and write your own story and maybe she will even read it. Um, I would love to. Yeah. So any Kipster watching this, make sure you send me anything that you're currently writing while you're stuck at home. You've got plenty of time to make up all sorts of characters and stories. Um, so again, thank you so much for answering all of our questions. Um, we oh, learned very so welcome. And thank you for the great questions, kids. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye-bye.